Welcome back to another episode of the Coach Steve Show. Welcome in, everybody. Today, we're going to continue on with our over-under win totals for each conference that we can up until college football comes back in week zero. We are going to talk about the Big Ten East and talk about each team and talk about their over win over totals, go through their schedules, and talk about the Big Ten East and how each team is going to fare uh, welcome in. Uh, make sure you guys like and subscribe to YouTube channel. Follow it, rate it on iTunes and wherever you listen to your podcast. It's greatly appreciated. Um, check out the Belly Up Media Network at bellyupsports.com. There's stuff there for everybody. Um, blogs, podcasts, stuff that's not even sports is there. So go do all that. Follow me at Coach underscore Steve72. And if you want to be on the podcast, shoot me a message. So last time we talked about the Big Ten West. Over-unders for each team. Now we're going to continue on with the Big Ten East. Um, going over each team and how they did last year, their record from last year. They talk about their, uh, what um, Vegas says the over-under win totals are going to be for these teams. In the Big Ten West, you saw a lot of um, a lot of full numbers. And what I mean by is you saw like Rutgers with four wins or Penn State over-under eight. Big Ten East has a lot of a half wins. So this one's going to be a little bit tougher. So let's dive in. We're going to talk about the Big Ten East and talk about who we think could come out of there and how each team's going to fare. Very tough, very tough conference. Um, depends on how each team plays. So we're going to start off with um, Purdue Boilermakers. So let's go into Purdue. Last year, Purdue went nine and four. Very good record for Purdue for Purdue in football. But they had a lot of close games. They played a lot better. Their offense got a lot better. But Purdue again is one of those teams that goes up and down. They're either they're either pretty good, they're pretty uh, competitive, or they kind of stay the same. And then other teams start to catch up. You know, when Purdue seems to start to go up, then other teams really accelerate that and they really jump up. Um, to take that. So let's look at their schedule. It is a tough schedule for Purdue this year. They start off very tough with Penn State, and then they get Indiana State, and then Syracuse with Dino Babers, um, Florida Atlantic, Minnesota, Maryland, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois, Northwestern, and Indiana. The over-under for Purdue this year is 7.5, coming off that 9-4 and four win. This is going to be very, very tough for Purdue to get to seven to eight wins. Penn State, no matter how bad of a year they have, Penn State, if it's their first game, they're going to come out hungry, healthy. That's going to be a tough one. Now, by principle, Purdue could beat Indiana State or should. Um, Indiana State's going to be better, but off principle, they should be able to beat them, so that'd be their first one. Syracuse had a down, down year last year. Um, do you know people keep saying Coach Babers is in a fight for his life? Uh, being around him at EIU, watching how he coaches, how that coaching staff's going to be. I think Syracuse will be better. So I don't see Purdue beating Syracuse. Florida Atlantic, Purdue could beat. Their strength coach is very, very good. Um, but when it comes down to, you know, by principle, Purdue should beat them. But then you start to really get into your Big Ten play with Minnesota, Maryland, and Nebraska. Those right there are all very winnable games for Purdue. Again, depends on how Minnesota's playing. It depends on the quarterback play for Maryland. And if Nebraska is spiraling out of control, which I predict they will when we get to Nebraska, Purdue could win there. But I just don't see them beating Wisconsin. I don't see them beating Iowa. I don't see them beating Illinois. I don't even see them beating Northwestern. Um, but they could beat Indiana. So if you're looking to try to get them to the 7-8 win mark, they beat Indiana State, they beat Florida Atlantic, so there's two. Their next one win probably can't come until Nebraska for three, and their next win through that schedule, my prediction, won't come until Indiana at the very end, so there's four. The only way you could talk about another game that they could win is Maryland and Minnesota, but even then for me, that's getting them into the 5-6 win mark. So the over-under for the 7.5, I'm going to go with the under. And it's no offense to Purdue. It's just looking at, again, like we did before, the other teams, where they are, how they recruited, and where they're going. You know, last year they beat Oregon State. They beat Connecticut. Then they lose to Notre Dame. They come out squeaker out against Illinois. 
They lose to Minnesota in a tough one. They end up beating Iowa, which was huge, huge upset. They lose to Wisconsin. They beat Nebraska. They lose. They end up beating Michigan State. They lose to Ohio State, and they beat Northwestern Indiana. And then in their bowl game, they beat Tennessee. So losing some of those guys, they, they could get there. When you look at the schedule from last year, how they played, they could get to that seven and a half win mark. But it's very tough to come back and beat Iowa two years in a row. It's very tough to come back. They beat Michigan State last year, which is very tough. It's tough to do those things back-to-back years. So I'm going to go with the under on the seven and a half. I could maybe see six or seven, but to get to that eight win mark and do the nine and four again would be very tough for Purdue. So I'm going to have to go with the under seven and a half for Purdue. I'm sorry, Boilermakers. You know, you had a very magical season last year, but I just don't. It's hard to see. Now, again, this is no offense to anybody. It just depends on schedule, by principle, how things are going to shake up. Um, so we just got through Purdue. Then we go under seven and a half. Next team up on our Big Ten East, we are going to look at Minnesota. Again, one of those toss ups. Depends on how they're playing because they, they kind of go up and down. They have a great year with the 11 1 year, and then COVID year comes along and they don't do too hot. They started off okay last year. If we had a lot of teams. We had three teams go nine and four last year in the Big Ten East, and Minnesota was one of them. They ended up going nine and four last year um, with some great games last year and some not so great games for Minnesota. Um, last year, they lose to Ohio State in the very beginning of the year. They go on to beat Miami of Ohio and Colorado. Then they lose a tough one to Bowling Green. Then they beat Purdue. They beat Nebraska, they beat Maryland, and they beat Northwestern, and then they lose a tough one, close one to Illinois, then they lose to Iowa, then they ended up on a string here. Um, They beat Indiana, they upset Wisconsin last year, then they beat uh, West Virginia in their bowl game. So Minnesota is just always up and down, because listen to the teams they beat. Purdue, Nebraska, Maryland, Northwestern. They go on this nice string. Then my Illinois final line, I come in and beat them. Then they lose to Iowa, but it's a close one. Then they go on a nice string. And then to beat Wisconsin, when Wisconsin started to play a lot better, is is great. So, again, Minnesota is exactly the same as Purdue. They went 9-4 last year. The over-under is 7.5. So, looking at last year to this year, they start off with New Mexico State, then Western Illinois, Colorado, Michigan State, Purdue, Illinois, Penn State, Rutgers, Nebraska, Northwestern, Iowa, and Wisconsin. Another tough path to try to get to the seven and a half or to even end up nine and four like they did last year. Starting off the year, they should be two and oh. So right there is your two wins. Then Colorado is still no give me, but I'm going to go with Minnesota in this one to beat them. Now, last year, I don't believe we we said, I don't think they played Michigan State. They did not. So it's going to be a very tough one right there. I kind of have to go with Michigan State there. Um, So you're looking at being 3-0, possibly going to Michigan State, losing there. Um, I have them beating Purdue. I don't have them beating Illinois. I don't have them beating Penn State. But I have them beating Rutgers and Nebraska. And people are going to say, well, do you have them beating Wisconsin again? I do not. I do not. Wisconsin was very up and down last year, but I think they're going to be back to what they were. I think Iowa was disappointed from their season last year, so I think Iowa is going to be back. So you're looking at New Mexico State, Western Illinois, Colorado for their three wins, Purdue as their fourth win, Rutgers as their fifth win, Nebraska as their sixth win. I could see Northwestern beating Minnesota, but if you were to give it to them, there's their seven. So right there's their seven, the over, over under seven and a half. Now, I know people listening, well, they're going to beat Illinois. They haven't beat Illinois in a couple of years, and they're much better coached last year than they were the first time they beat them, you know, from the COVID year. So I don't see them doing that. Um, so this is another tough one. Do they get to the seven, eight, one mark? Now, they could be come in and, you know, beat Iowa and Wisconsin or Penn State, Illinois. It's obvious, you know, obviously they could. 
again, just like Purdue, it's very, very tough where they're going to be at. I'm going to go with the under, but I think they're going to get right to the seven. The reason why I'm going under is because I just don't know if they're going to get to eight. Eight to me would be – I know they went nine and four last year, but this schedule I say eight is the top. If they get to nine, that is just cherry. You know, they get to eight, that's that's the icing, and then they get to nine, that's the cherry on top. So I'm going to go with the under only because they I could see them getting exactly seven if they get to eight. Again, that's icing, but I can see them getting exactly two, um, seven. So I have to go with the under on the seven and a half. Next one we're going to talk about, we might as well just hop into one of the big time guys here that have in the Big Ten is Wisconsin. Wisconsin started off a little shaky last year, and then they started to find it, and then they get a little shaky again, which is unlike North or unlike Wisconsin. But I could see them getting back on track this year. Looking at what they did last year, they went nine and four last year. Again, we had three teams in the Big Ten East go nine and four. They were the third one. Their over under is nine wins this year. So last year they lose to Penn State at the very beginning, a close one. They go on to beat Eastern Michigan, and then they lose to Notre Dame. They lose to Michigan. They beat Illinois and Champaign, and they beat Army. Then they beat Purdue. They beat Iowa, and they beat Rutgers, Northwestern, and Nebraska. And then they lose that heartbreaker to Minnesota, and then they win their bowl game against Arizona State. But all a lot of their games were close that they won, um, and then some were blowouts. So they, they started off a little rough with Penn State and Notre Dame and Michigan. Didn't look the same. Even the Illinois when they won 24 nothing, and we'll talk more about that when we get to Illinois' schedule because I'm an Illinois guy. That was still – Illinois was a couple plays away from scoring and competing in that game. And then Army, being Army, that's a tough offense stop. And then they got it rolling, and then Minnesota came in, guns a-blazing, and you know got that upset. But this year, looking at their schedule, they start off with – Illinois State, then Washington State, New Mexico State, Ohio State, Illinois, Northwestern, Michigan State, Purdue, Maryland, Iowa, Nebraska, and Minnesota. So the over-under is nine, so let's go through the schedule and see if we can get them to that nine-win mark, in my opinion. They start off, they start off with a win against Illinois State. Washington State running the run-and-shoot. But with the physicality of Wisconsin, could see them beating uh, Washington State and then beating New Mexico State. So they're going to go into Columbus, Ohio week for their week four at Ohio State. They will go in there 3-0. and That will be a very tough game for Ohio State. And I said that in the last one, talking about the Big Ten West, where Ohio State's games where they could lose, Wisconsin was one of them. Um, but I'm going to go with that they don't beat Ohio State. Then get to my Illinois final line. I, it all depends on how Illinois is playing at that point. Can Illinois get the quote-unquote upset? Coach Bielema's um, team, you know, his old team playing against his new team. Um, then Northwestern is going to be very, very tough. But, you know, by principle from the past, you're looking at Wisconsin really playing well in that game. They'll have a tough one with, with Michigan State. But then they have a nice string here where they can win some games. Purdue and Maryland, I have them winning. Iowa would be a slug out. I have them being Nebraska, and I have them getting that rival or you know, coming back against Minnesota. So they're 3-0 going into Ohio State, and then they lose to Ohio State. Um, if you're looking at where they can get their other wins, Purdue, Maryland with their fifth, Nebraska and Minnesota as their seventh. So they have to. If you're looking for two more wins, you could maybe look at Illinois and maybe Northwestern, and I can also see them beating Iowa for the tenth win. So again, very tough when they put them at exactly nine. I wish I could just go. I mean, I guess it's my show. I guess I could go right at the nine win. I guess I could go right there. I'm going to say they're going to get to nine wins, but I will go with the. Um, oh, this one's a tough one, guys. They're going to get right to nine wins, I think, when you're looking at it. All depends on how they're playing. It all depends on if they don't allow people to upset them. It all depends on how Iowa's going to be because Iowa's win total, their over-under is not very high. Um, 
I'm going to go with the over, but I think they're going to get right tonight. Just go with the over. I've been a little Debbie Downer on some of my picks here at the Big Ten and going with the under, but I'm going to go with the over. I think they're going to get right to that nine wins because Wisconsin, again, even though they had a nine and four win, just watching them play, the, the numbers sound good, but you actually have to watch them play and understand that they were not playing the, their, their exact brand of football or not playing up to their standards um, last year. So well, let's go with Iowa. Iowa last year ended up going 10-4. and four. Their wins over under this year will be 7.5. Um, I had picked them to win the Big Ten or compete to win the Big Ten. They did not end up beating uh, Michigan to win the Big Ten, but I had them up there um, to end up going 10-4, and four, still pretty good. So let's look at last year. They started off good, and they had a hard time scoring last year um, as they went along. They beat Indiana. They beat Iowa State. They beat Kent State. They beat Colorado State. They beat Maryland, and they end up beating Penn State in a close one, 23-20. Then they had the heartbreaker lose to Purdue. Then they lose to Wisconsin. They beat Northwestern in a very close game against a young Northwestern team, 17 to 12. Then they beat Minnesota. They beat Illinois. And, it, you know, only by 10 points, Illinois played a lot better than a lot of people thought. They beat Nebraska. Then they lose to Michigan in the Big Ten Championship game. And then they lose to Kentucky, but in a close one, uh, 20 to 17. So they're in a lot of close games last year. Over under this year, seven and a half. So let's go through their schedule. They start off with South Dakota State, which whew, good for you playing South Dakota State. That will be a tough one. Um, then they play Iowa State, uh, Nevada, Rutgers, Michigan, Illinois, Ohio State, Northwestern, Purdue, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Nebraska. So let's go through and see if we can get to that seven and a half. I think they beat South Dakota State, even though I think it will be a good one. I see them beating Iowa State again, so there's your two wins. They're going to beat Nevada, and they're going to beat Rutgers. So going to play Michigan at home, they are going to be 4-0. The only one they lose there is Iowa State, but being 4-0. So right there, they only need about three more or four more to get to that point. I don't. They're going to try to get their revenge on Michigan. I don't see them beating Michigan. So they're going to be 4-0 to Michigan, losing there. Illinois is going to be a tough one. They played them tough last year. Illinois is going to have a much better offense this year. Their defense is going to take the next step forward. They're not going to beat Ohio State. I could see Northwestern probably getting that win. But I see Iowa beating Purdue. And I see them beating Nebraska. So if you go 4-0 going into Michigan and you lose that one, so you have four wins, you find another win at Purdue, and then you find another win in Nebraska. The only other win they could get to is Minnesota, and maybe Illinois. So right now it's seven and a half. I'm going to go with the over, even though I think they're going to get right at seven. They're, going to get, they're not going to go 10 and four. I just don't see it. I see it, but I don't think it will happen because I don't I don't think they'll beat Michigan. I think Michigan's finally turned a corner. Don't see them being Ohio State. And then, and then Wisconsin's a tough one. And then out of that, if Northwestern played them tough last year and they're young, and I get to see Northwestern up close at a, you know in their practices, got to see it up close, they're going to be a lot better. And so Northwestern could squeak it out, and Illinois playing them tough, they could squeak that out. But I'm going to go with the over, but I think it's going to be that 7 or 8 win mark that Nebraska, or excuse me, that Iowa will get. But it's going to be right there. But I, I've been a Debbie Downer again. So with Watson and Iowa, I'm going to go with, their, with the overs on them uh, in the Big Ten East. All you football coaches out there, it's not too late to still be looking up drills. I know we're in our football seasons, going into our football seasons, but it's never too late to get back to the basics. And Coach Stone has done just that by creating his Back to the Basics drill manuals. So if you go to CoachStoneFootball.com, click on Back to the Basics drill manuals, there's drills out there for everything, special teams, offense, defense, strength and conditioning, everything. He has done all the work for us to be simple, to get these drills to help us. You could be using them in youth, high school, and even college. We, we make things too complicated. We need drills that are simple and back to the basics. His very first book is over 500 pages of drills. So go to, again, go to coachstonefootball.com, click on back to the basics drill manuals, and uh, let's get back to the basics. Thank you, Coach Stone, for sponsoring the podcast. Football coaches out there. 
do you ever stop and think about all the hits your big guys are taking in the trenches, your D-line, your offensive line? Because they hit each and every play. And that's why it's the best position in football. But they take a lot of hits and practices into the game. It's a lot of hits they're taking, a lot of blows. So there's a way to protect those shells and reduce the impact those guys are taking each and every week. And it's Guardian Caps at Guardian Sports. It helps reduce the impact by up to 30%, which is huge. So there's a way to protect the helmets, protect those guys. Uh, again, that's Guardian Sports. If you go to guardiansports.com slash guardian dash caps and you use the code 15 off, it's going to save you 15% off your order. Um, there's different colors out there and it doesn't matter if you're buying one, two, three, four, a hundred. doesn't matter. It's worn by over five NFL teams. More NFL teams are adding more and more each day and you're seeing on TV and over 200 plus colleges. Again, you're seeing colleges left and right get them. There's a reason why they're getting them. And they that's why you see a lot of linemen and defensive linemen wear them. You've seen Alabama, Georgia, Oklahoma, Penn State, and big-time NFL teams wear them. So if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for us. And I know it costs money, but I'm here to save you money. So guardiansports.com slash guardian dash caps and use the code 15 off. It will save you 50% off your order. Thank you, Guardian Sports, for sponsoring this podcast. All right, moving right along. We're going to move on. Our next team we're going to talk about is Northwestern, Northwestern Wildcats who are going to be a lot better this year. So we're going to check out their schedule and talk about what they did last year. So looking at Northwestern last year, they went three and nine, which was coming off a big time year that they had with the COVID year playing in the big 10 championship game and coming up short against Ohio state. So let's look at what they did last year. Um, like I said, they went three and nine, one and eight in big 10 play. Um, they had a rough schedule. They lost to Michigan State at the beginning of the year, came with a win against Indiana State, um, lost a close one to Duke, um, ended up beating the Ohio Bobcats in Evanston. They ended up coming. They're losing to Nebraska. I did not think the score was like that, but that's not going to be the case this year. Um, they get a win versus Rutgers. Then they lose to uh, Michigan, Minnesota, very close game against Iowa, lose to Wisconsin, lose to Purdue, and then they lost at the end of the year against Illinois. Now, getting to see Northwestern up close, had the privilege to um, talk to Coach Fitzgerald, which was a great honor. That was one of my great honors of my life um, up there with all the coaches I've been able to talk to. That was one of the one of the best to talk to Coach Fitzgerald. I want him on the podcast. So if anybody can make that happen, make it happen. So they're over under this year is three and a half. Um, after going three and nine last year. So let's look at their schedule. They get to play Nebraska this year in Dublin, Ireland, which is going to be fantastic. Um, then they play Duke, Southern Illinois, Salukis from Carbondale, Miami of Ohio, Penn State, Wisconsin, Maryland, Iowa, Ohio State, Minnesota, Purdue, and end with Illinois. So let's look at their schedule. They're over under three and a half. So can they get to that three one mark or can they get back to a bowl game? I, people are having Nebraska a very high on Nebraska. I have not watched Nebraska's practices, but watching the Nebraska play last year, how it spirals, stuff going on there. Northwestern will get that win. They'll get that win. So right there, they're soft a win in Dublin. Um, I think they're going to get their bounce back against Duke. I did not go to Southern Illinois. My friends went to Southern Illinois. Uh, you guys that listen to other segments of the podcast, my Logan's went to Southern, Brad went to Southern, but Southern's not going to be Northwestern. So right there, you know, Northwestern can start three and zero right there. So you're talking about the, the, the over. Then they play Miami of Ohio. Just on principle, they should be able to be Miami of Ohio. So right there, going to play was to play Penn State. Um, their next Big Ten game after Nebraska, they're either going to be four and zero. Or three and one, which we're already getting to that three and a half mark. Um, then they got tough one with Penn State and Wisconsin. Maryland's a toss up because it all depends on how it, it, you notice the theme here. How Maryland's quarterback play is playing is going to determine the, that right there. Then they had a close one with Iowa. Then Ohio State's going to be a big time game. Minnesota, Purdue, and Illinois. So. Went with Nebraska, went with Duke, went with Southern Illinois, and went with Miami of Ohio. Then their next time that you're looking at, and please, Coach Fitzgerald, if you listen to this, I apologize. Just looking at these teams, they're, I mean, as I'm telling you, Northwestern has a physical offensive line. They got a physical run game. 
Their short passing game is phenomenal. Their defense of line does really well um, controlling the line of scrimmage. You're looking at where they could probably beat Minnesota um, and Purdue. They could squeak one out with Maryland and Iowa. So I'm going to go with the over. Northwestern, I'm going to go with the over, and I'm going to not be shocked to see them back in a bowl game. Coach Fitzgerald and the staff was, is phenomenal. Um, how they, they were very young last year, very, very young, losing a lot from their team before in the Big Ten title game. So they will be – I'm taking – you've got to hammer the over. A lot of these I'm not 100% confident on this one. I am. You've got to take the over on the three-and-a-half wins from Northwestern, and they will be back in the bowl game conversation. Um, to, 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 to get to the end here of this Big Ten East, talked about them on their own. On another episode before, let's talk about Nebraska. I am not very big on Nebraska. People are. Last year, Nebraska went three and nine. Now, after going three and nine, losing their three time captain, the most in Nebraska history quarterback, they got a quarterback there that they like with the stuff that's happened there, firing and changing of assistant coaches. They're over under this year is seven and a half after going three and nine with not much improvement. Some say there is, but for me personally, you're looking at not so much. So looking at them last year, they lose to Illinois at the beginning of the year. Then they beat Fordham and they beat Buffalo. Then they lose to Oklahoma. They lose to Michigan State in overtime. They get a win against Northwestern. And then they go on to lose the rest of their games. They lose to Michigan, Minnesota, Purdue, Ohio State, Wisconsin, Iowa. Now, I've said this before on a different podcast, talking about Scott Frost and talking about Nebraska in general. Their losses are very close. Illinois was 30-22, to even though Illinois was up big. Then they lose to Michigan, 32-29. to Lose to Minnesota, 30-27. to Purdue was 28-23. to Ohio State, 26-17. Wisconsin 35 to 28, Iowa 28 and 21. Very close ones, but I've talked about this. Over the years, they've had close losses. Then it's up to the coaches to figure out how to get them over the hump. People are hammering this over seven and a half because of their schedule this year. So let's check it out. Northwestern and Dublin. Then they've got North Dakota, not North Dakota State, just North Dakota, Georgia Southern, Oklahoma. Indiana, Rutgers, Purdue, Illinois, Minnesota, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Iowa. I'm going to tell you right now, I without even looking at this, I'm going to take the under. So and a half, I'm going to take the under because I, I'm going with Northwestern to beat them. They're going to beat North Dakota, and they're probably going to beat Georgia Southern, even though that's no give me either. So they're 2 one going to, to play Oklahoma at home. Don't see them beating Oklahoma. Don't, And then the next one would come to Indiana. So right there, if you're looking at beating North Dakota, Georgia Southern, and Indiana, there's three. Maybe Rutgers, you'll get your fourth one, and maybe Purdue, you get your fifth. But you're, if Illinois had the number a couple of times, don't, not beating them. You're not going to be Wisconsin, Michigan, Iowa. So they might get to six wins, but I'm going to take the under on this one because I feel like it's more difficult for them to get to seven um, and eight than it is. To, I, I think I'd be more confident saying they get to five or six. So if you told me their over under was five and a half, I feel more comfortable with that. But I'm going to go with the under with Nebraska at seven and a half um, in the Big Ten or their overall after going three and nine. It's amazing to go three and nine and then next year say you're over under seven and a half. Um, during this podcast, I was going to, I think I'm going to do a whole another episode with Illinois, but I'll tell you right now, we'll, we won't go through everything. Um, Illinois last year went five and seven. Their over under is four and a half. I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna go with the over, but I'm gonna do a whole podcast talking about their their preseason. I talked about Illinois on the rise on a different episode. I'm sorry, I am an Illinois fan. I try my best to keep that out of the rest of the Big Ten stuff talking about this. Um, but just for s- safekeeping, I'll put up the schedule here on. If you're watching it on the video, I'll put up their schedule. I'm gonna do a whole other podcast one so we'll just go through their schedule real quick they got wyoming indiana virginia chattanooga wisconsin iowa minnesota nebraska michigan state purdue michigan and northwestern 
I am going to go with the over. They're over. They're they're over under is four and a half after going five and seven last year. Last year their over under was three and a half, and they went five and seven. This year is four and a half. They were a few plays away from making a bowl game, so I'm going to go with the over. But I'm going to do a whole other breakdown on them. So that wraps up this Big Ten East section. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and listening. We're going to try my best to do SEC, Pac-12, ACC, and Big 12. Um, so check all those out. Check out all the other episodes. Um, check out all the affiliate description below. Like and subscribe. Rate it on iTunes. Follow me at Coach underscore Steve 72 all that good stuff. Um, thank you guys again for watching and listening. Um, this has been Coach Steve, another episode of the Coach Steve Show podcast, and we will see you next time.